Hello there. Hi. Another one. Welcome to Explore the Beyond Scales of Destiny Season 2, Episode 5. Um, it's good to see you. Um, had a few technical, small technical issues that just kind of expanded into, like, half an hour of trying to fix it. Um, one of them fixed itself, which was great. Really enjoyed wasting time on that one. And the other ones just took a bit of time to fix. That's okay. We're here now. Um, we're going to play D&D, which is always fun. Um, yes, if you have not yet seen... I don't know if anyone here hasn't yet seen, but if you haven't, check out YouTube at Explore the Beyond. Um, we have the VODs of the first four sessions of Season 2, which is a good jumping on point if you just want a kind of high-level campaign to jump into. Or from Episode 14 to 54 of the first season, um, where you can kind of catch up completely, although it is a long trek through. And some of it is a bit lower quality than others, but, you know, still go back and watch it and all that jazz and compliment us on how good we are at D&D. &D. Yeah, do that. Um, yeah, other than that, let's bring in the team and they can do the talking for me because I don't know what to say. Let's get pushed through to you at mm -hmm. the DJ booth and you have to try to help people to save their lives. Oh, like you information. Now. Yeah, I watched Jack Sebkai complete that. Ah, <laughs> nice. Games. I might go. Yeah, I did one. Oh. Yeah, I might go back and watch that stream as well then, so I can. Am I home on Saturday? I don't remember. I see our names flashing up on the screen. Mm -hmm. Oh no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about, but you know, killer frequency. Did you guys know that Burius TV is streaming on his own channel quite successfully? <laughs> I mean, yes. Yes, I did. Yes, I, I was just plugging him. <laughs> <laughs> plugging him, he's the he's the reason we still go. He is the beating heart and soul of the stream. Yeah, no pressure. Yeah. No pressure, Mirrors. No pressure. <laughs> Might be a soul there somewhere. I, I believe in you. I believe in you. Um. Anyway, hi, everyone. Hello. Um... We're going to play D&D, &D and Athena is going to do a quick recap of the last session, which shouldn't yeah. be too difficult. Yeah, a very quick recap. So we started out the session in uh, the little town of Lisbon. Um, we got some breakfast, and then we went shopping. Oh, that was, I think, the week before even. We started the session the going shopping, just getting some supplies for the journey to the World Tree. But on the way... Um, while we went shopping and while we were on the market, we felt sort of like, well, I felt like someone was watching us. And I approached him and it was what I assume is a wizard called Steppen, at least a caster called Steppen. Um, and I thought, even as a player, but my character as well, thought he was a little bit shifty and it was a little bit weird, but he just brushed it off. So, yeah, we continued. And then we traveled through the jungle to get to the shore of the um, central lake of the island, which hopefully will take us to uh, the wild tree. While we were traveling, we um, had a few long rests and a few yeah rests um, where we realized that Stappen was actually scrying on us. or I don't know if he was scrying for sure, but he was at least spying on us and kept talking to me about i don't know random stuff not it didn't feel and well I, I don't know if it felt invasive well if no it did feel invasive but i don't know if it felt um like he was trying to harm us or being harmful it just felt very invasive um we also saw light flashes in the sky um but i don't think we determined yet or we i don't think we know yet what it was and we saw those every night, sometimes more frequently, sometimes less frequently. Uh, I tried to steal things from my group. They did not take kindly to that. Um, and I believe, yeah, we continue to travel and are in the process process of building, or fabricating, I believe is this spell called, um, a boat or a catamaran to sail across the lake. Cool. 
Thank you. Um, yes, to everything there. <clears throat> we rejoin the group, um, I believe in the morning, while Scold is once again getting to work fabricating some of the logs. Um, we've kind of skipped forward a little bit, and you now have a completed sort of catamaran raft type thing um, that after a couple of successful tests you've deemed to be seaworthy. Um, Vic has been keeping watch this time, whole time and sort of fishing and supplying the group with fresh fruit and not fruit, food, um, to, you know, keep fruit you all motivated. Fruit. fruit is a food. Yes. But he has not been providing you with it as yet at the moment. <laughs> That's all for me. It's all for him. Exactly. Vic is big and hungry. He needs all the food. <laughs> um, so as you come to the end of your crafting day. We'll say this is the beginning of your third day at the shoreline. Everything's been fully crafted and successfully put together. Um, Aqua has done a sort of provisional check, being the most experienced with um, water-based vehicles, let's say. <laughs> Um, he's the one that is kind of more reliably able to determine whether something's good or not. So if we sink, it's all that. Well, yeah, basically. Good. Basically. Um. So I'm currently just. It's fine. Never mind. Um. <clears throat> So yeah, now you're all kind of ready and readying yourselves to get going. Is there anything you want to do before you leave? Mm. Yeah. Have we heard from Stappen in the last three days? No, he's been strangely silent. Um, you haven't heard from him. You haven't noticed any more scrying eyes or scrying orbs around. But you have continued to see the sort of light shows in the Sakai. And um, the shadows that have been sort of flying over as well have also been there. Um, and can we see the tree from here? You can't see the tree. No, um, okay. But you can see the glow that emanates from it. Well, at least we know which way we're going then. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, also, Vic, you'll have picked up on this as will have scold. While keeping watch at night and watching the shadows fly overhead, you've noticed that they're all flying in the direction of the glowing tree. Mm. It's been more apparent now that you have, you know, like an obvious destination from the direction they're going. And then thinking back over the sort of week or so that you've been traveling and seeing them. You notice that they've all kind of at least been heading in the same direction. Well, I guess better tell the group that so might be ambushed at some point. There's always a so risk of ambush. Yes, yeah, so I like to relay that information that we may not be as safe as we first thought. I'm not sure what these shadows could be. They could be just native creatures, things attracted to the light, like a moth to the flame. Or well, they could be something else. Um, is there any way we can make ourselves a little bit more hidden? Just so we are not being discovered, being ambushed on the open water if we have to sail for what, 30 miles or whatever is... Better than that. Not yeah, whatever. <laughs> is um is not is not ideal. 
100 miles, isn't it, I think? Something oh, close to that, yeah. I mm. don't know if there's much we can really do, really, in this. Mm. Unless you've got some kind of magic that could make us... I, I don't, don't unfortunately. Mm. Is it worth us? I know it might be silly. Is it worth us to wear in heavy armor to not wear heavy armor? In case we sink. Yeah. Can we? Can we? Can you? Uh, how many fabric heads do you have left for today? Today's a new day, so you've got all three. Well, technically five. Is there some sort of compartment you could build? Technically six, because you've got six levels now. Um, is there some sort of compartment you can build for where we can keep our armor safe? I do, yeah. Um, I mean, we keep it in packs, though, can't we? Because it accounts to our weight already, right? In a mechanics kind of point of view. Yeah, but I'm wearing heavy armor and I can't just have it on my pack. Yeah. And, and what's the point there? I, yeah. If you if you sink, then you sink, whether you have it on you or not. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess makes sense. And I can. Yeah. I well, can. You've got magic that could probably help you get back out of it anyway, right? Yeah, I I can cast fly on myself, and I can cast fly on other people too. So, yeah. Aqua can swim, so that's not an issue. But if I have, <laughs> if I have the Okay, yeah. how about... Wait, wait, wait. Question, DM. No. If a spell is verbal and I'm underwater... I, we, I've had that question before, but I don't remember what you ruled on that. Can I... If I'm not inca incapacitated, can I still speak the incantation underwater? I feel like that question was for Marnie, you know? No. I, maybe. I don't remember. Um, talked about it in Discord before, and it was like, you can still... Say words on the water. Yeah, it depends how long the words are. Yeah. I mean, I don't see so why if I, not. If I, if I, I shout on the water, you can hear noise, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. So if I kept my armor on and I would not be incapacitated or not be knocked unconscious, you could dimension door, yeah. I, I either dimension door or I could fly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so I, yeah. That makes sense. I was like only yeah. verbal, but no, you could still move your hands and you know stuff yeah. like that. Okay, then I will. But there's also no reason well, you on. couldn't like create a box that has a hatch on the bottom of the bo boat, you know, or the top that just holds things. Yeah. Mm. I was thinking we could just tie ourselves onto the boat with rope, right? Of extra security. Yeah, yeah we I could do that too. I think I might do that because I can always cut it if I need to fly away if something casts fly on me or something. Yeah. But you can uh, also we could also keep everything in the bag of folding. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I think I'll leave my armor on for now then and just tie myself to the boat. Because I could even if I get full in the water, I can pull myself up the rope yeah. in no time in the water to get out of All right. it, hopefully. Yeah. I'll keep my armor on for now as well, but we'll see what the first day of travel brings. Mm -hmm. Also, for resting, we have to take it off anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to try some experimentation with runes, but not the runes we were talking about before. Okay. Um, I, a rune of... I, I just want the, the ship to do well. So I'm thinking trying to instill good fortune into the ship. Yeah. <laughs> Like a rune of fortune, rune of luck of the sea, <laughs> something like that. Like, I don't know. Gets okay. lucky with the breaks of the waves and just just practice it. Try, like try to come up with something because it could be like start from today and then it lasts. Take as long as it takes on our journey because I think we're going to be at sea for a long time. So, all right, roll. We'll say that you started this when you arrived at the shoreline. So you've had a day, like a couple of days to 
sort of work on it. Okay. Um, roll an intelligence check and then add expertise, so plus eight. Um, intelligence check plus eight plus eight. Oh, that was a 19 for so long. <laughs> okay. With an 11, you feel like you could probably... Um, you feel like you could probably come up with something. Um, mm -hmm. But you're not sure exactly how... Necessarily... Um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, you're not sure necessarily how you could potentially how how long lasting it would be. Okay, does that make sense? So, like, you could probably um, inscribe something, and at the same time, imbue it with enough power to either maybe grant. A bit of fortune so maybe a sort of lucky type deal or mm -hmm. um increase the strength overall of the whole ship well vessel yeah um yeah which you'd probably feel more inclined to due to your inherent strength and also um other runes that you already have so that, that, that avenue might end up being a bit more successful. However, if you went the lucky route where you kind of would potentially gain good favor in wins or um, um, like pathfinding, stuff like that, or ability to avoid obstacles, mm -hmm. you're worried that there might be repercussions just because you're not quite so well versed in that sort of magic. Okay. Well, my brain power is telling me to work on the strength then. My limited brain power. <laughs> You're more in slightly more intelligent than the average person. Don't put yourself down. Okay, so okay, I'll be working on that in my downtime when we're not doing much in sailing. Just assume I'm working on that. And I have to apply my runes every day anyway, so I'd have to reapply it to the ship every day, I guess, so... Yeah, that would probably be the case. You'd have to refresh it every day. Mm -hmm. um, right. Sorry, I'm working out distances. Because instead of just giving me whoops, instead of just giving me like a straight answer, it's messing me around. Don't know. Okay, so at the speed this boat could possibly go, it would take you four days. Aqua tells you. Aqua kind of knows. Would that be if we take it in shifts to keep it going at 24 hours? Or that like would be anchoring? that would be if you just did eight hours and then kind of drifted. But if you were going to go for 24, like if you were going to sort of do it in shifts, um, then you'd be going, what's that, 72? You could make it in about a day and a half. That's good in shifts. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. So could we do 12 hours shifts? Because it's not strenuous or is it strenuous and we should do like two people eight hours then the other two eight hours and then just yeah that's supposed to do that two people for eight hours yeah. the other two people sleep just eight hours just rolling yeah yeah you can do it like that um it's the best it's the best way to avoid like potential exhaustion or anything like that it's um always a bit finickety with like rules as written technically you're only supposed to do like eight hours of traveling <laughs> but if you're on a boat how does that work um yeah the boat's doing the traveling really i guess yeah but if you do if you're doing like two eight hour shifts each like consecutive and then two eight hours rest eight hours rest you should be fine yeah cool. we all can see the glow right so we all know that 
we need to sail that direction regardless of who's awake. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you have a very good idea of which direction to be going in. It's just more of a case of um, like whoever's on shift with Aqua, for example, has an advantage in that Aqua has proficiency with water vehicles, I believe. Or at least if he doesn't, uh, he should. Um pretty sure I should. Yeah, you do, water vehicle. Um, so, you know, he's going to be able to keep you on course if there's, like, difficult uh, weather or difficult um, water surfaces. What am I trying to say? You know what I'm trying to say. Um, difficult seas. Yeah, difficult seas. Uh, so whoever's not on shift with Aqua might struggle, but that's not going to delay you too much because at the end of the day, you're in a land like a landlocked sea, so you can't go too far off where you're supposed to be. Um, so, who's going with who then? I kind of kind of prefer to go Brinia, I think. We need to bounce to keep an eye on her. Oh come on! <laughs> and two because she can cast fly on me. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if, I, if, I, if I get untired and fall in the water, well, yes, that's true. Okay. Pretend that was the first thing it said. That was the initial thing that I was like, oh, actually, I can also keep an eye on her. <laughs> but yeah, that's the main thing. <clears throat> okay. All right, let's go to you and me. Okay. All right. So, as the four of you kind of break camp and start getting ready to head off, Aqua, as you collect up all of your things your bag your pack um your equipment your weapons you notice that you're actually missing a few fair few items your bag is considerably lighter your weapons are missing yes come to think of it you haven't actually had to look for or through them for a few days you have no idea when they may have gone hmm. Bryn, have you been stealing stuff again what no? Yeah, I what no? You've seen me every single day. You kept an eye on me when I was sleeping. When you were sleeping, I wasn't stealing anything. Hmm. I'm missing my sword, my special dagger, my special crossbow. Uh, them spell that you gave me, and my amulet. Quite a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, I feel like you would have noticed if I had taken one. Are you sure you haven't put it in the bag of holding? I'm sure. It's been on me. You can Please have a look. There are two min items. I pass over the bag of holding. Do I see, do you see them in the bag of holding? You do not. No, they're not in there. Not my fault. I didn't oh, yeah. take any. Let's look in everyone's bags, then, shall we? Brynja, let's start with yours. <laughs> yeah, sure. I toss my bag to Vic. <clears throat> I gave it to Aqua, because he knows what we're looking for. Do I see it? <laughs> Anything? In Brynja's bag, Aqua? Yeah. You see everything that you are, that of yours. <laughs> I'll do high. <laughs> you see your Wonder Fireballs, your Potions of Fire Breath, Poison resistance, your um, heat superior healing potions, this potion of speed and potion of flying, your amulet, your ring of fire resistance, your brace of defense, your dagger and your rapier and your crossbow. Wow. All right, I'm taking all that back then. <laughs> I feel like this is a setup. Who of who of you was it? Who did this? Well, Anybody whoever it was, to, to gain it's not bombs. funny. I didn't take it. Were you sure? Though, I you? am sure that I did not take it. I'm going to give Wait. you the benefit of the doubt this time, but... We, well, how many times are you going to give me the benefit of the doubt, though? <laughs> this time, when I've taken apparently everything. <laughs> didn't you have that truth spell? Who had the truth spell? I have the truth spell. Oh, that's, oh, good. that's convenient. And my uh, mojo hey, has I'm, that, I'm uh, willing to cast it. I, I'm willing to cast it if you want me to. I'll cast it. Oh, yeah, because well, you're the only one who knows if you... Wait. No. How do we know that you... I know it would work. I'm missing an eye from the last time I used truth spell. 
Yeah, but only she's going to know if she passes or resists or anything. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's true. Okay. I mean, cast it. I'm not that up with magic, but... I'll be not... watching carefully. Hmm. I'm going to roll anyway, but I... Oh. What? <laughs> You wouldn't know what I rolled. I should have rolled this privately. <laughs> Actually, can I redact that roll and roll it privately, even if it fails the next one? Can I Can I um, just keep it and roll it to you, Maglo? Sure. Actually, actually, I'm going to do something more fun. Uh, what is it? Plus 10? I'm. I'm not sure. I was doing something else. Sorry, for uh, saving throw. For my charisma saving throw. Um. Plus ten. Yeah. I don't know what I rolled. Oh, okay. I do. Yeah, I know. All right. You cast your spell. Okay. You how, all, how do we know, Brit? Sorry, go on. You all recognize that a spell has been cast. The sort of telltale signs of arcane magic kind of emanate, and you all feel... Actually, it's a it's a radius, so you're casting it upon everyone? Yeah. Okay, so everybody make the charisma save for me. Right, do I get advantage on this? You do, because it's a mental save. I get another one. Well, let's just say I <laughs> <laughs> didn't need that. All of you failed. <laughs> All of you have to speak the truth or avoid any questions I ask. <clears throat> so, through like the general feeling of arcane power that um, washes over you, and you all sort of are aware that the spell has been cast because you're all kind of take on the effects of it, whether willingly or not. And it's now up to you to decide whether you trust Rin enough to believe that she's also allowed it to come over her. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. I don't really care too much, but... Uh... <laughs> Even though I am annoyed, Bryn, that you had my stuff... And I don't know if you took them or not. I don't want to be doing this right now. I got my stuff back. I feel like we should just go. Okay. After she casts a spell. <laughs> that was an awfully honest answer from Aqua. Did any of you take Aqua's stuff and try to set me up? No. I mean, I took it from your bag once I found it in there. No, I meant from your bag to my bag. And oh, no. It was Aqua all along. Yeah. <laughs> Are you saying you didn't then, though? You didn't take it? Nope. I mean, Bryn trusted <laughs> the... Uh... I didn't take it. Well, At least I don't remember work. taking it. It's two different things now, isn't it? I think we just need to be a bit more vigilant on us belongings. I think I'll Take stay one every arm. night. Yeah. Well, you wanted to keep an eye on me, so you can keep an eye on me. I don't remember taking any of Aqua stuff, so... Gave me a second braces defense. I know, yeah, I just noticed that. <laughs> yeah, double the braces. <laughs> okay. So are we all are we all in trust in Nell mode right now? No Nell. No, definitely not Nell. Not not Nell. Uh, uh, Bryn, sorry. I mean 
Who knows? <laughs> yeah, trust is a very uh, strong word. Okay, I'll rephrase. Are we believing Bryn right now? That's better. <laughs> no, but <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Not necessarily, no. You don't have I a want to, but I have no reason to. Okay, okay. I mean, yeah. There's no way of pretend, like properly knowing that she also failed her save willingly or not. Um, so, and you also have seen her avoid other um, other effects um, quite proficiently. So, it's difficult to say. Let's get going. If it only takes us one and a half days, we'll be back sooner than later. Also, I can teleport us out of there if we need to, so we don't need to sail back. Okay. Be good. Well, let's get going then. And oh, I undock. Who's taking first drive, I guess. Well, we can all do it, and then in eight hours, two of us go to bed and two of us stay awake. But okay. for now, we just it, it's the morning, right? We just woke up. So there's no need to rest right now. Well, I'm going to sit I down guess... then and attune everything back to myself. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, everything has been gone long enough for you to have unattuned to it. Yeah. yeah. Reattuning. I mean, the two people who are going to be doing the this, this second shift probably should take it easy, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The first night, at least. That's okay, what I was going to well... say. As Aqua's going to be attuning, then I suppose I'll take it easy then and just make sure that the boat isn't falling into pieces. Okay. That's fine. That's fair. So, um, Aqu Aqua and Scold going first, right? No. Second. No, no, no. Second. Uh, right, Vic yeah. And first, Vic and Brigham. <laughs> cool. Sorry. I misunderstood what you said. Cool. Okay. So, the maiden voyage of SS Navigator... Um, and like D docks, D docks, undocks, D docks, yeah, D docks is <laughs> we get D docks, <laughs> um, launches, launches, uh, I say launches, yeah. the maiden journey, the maiden, voyage. the maiden voyage of SS Navigators second, um, leaves the shore and. To begin with, it's quite pleasant, to be honest. Um, despite it being ever so slightly cramped, it is quite a pleasant sort of um, quite a pleasant um, voyage over the water. It's quite smooth and not very rough and calm. There isn't really much wind in the sky. My eyes are going, which means the cold is getting worse, which is fantastic. Um, as you depart the first hour or two are actually quite uneventful not much happens um and you know you just kind of settle into a quick routine every like a scold as you're checking over your craftsmanship everything seems to be in working order and aqua you eventually manage to after an hour or so actually how many items do you need to attune to only two Two, so two hours you manage to attune to your items again. And, um, you know, you quickly find a routine that suits you. <laughs> yes, no doxing, sorry. <coughs> um, oh, I think my eyes are going to sort themselves out. Good. That was unpleasant. I couldn't see for a moment. Um... Who's on watch? It's Vic and Bryn, isn't it? Yeah. You're cool. Um, I need you to both make perception checks, please. Perception. Can I... Can he help me, or do we both need to do it? Both, please. Okay. Well, it's a good thing Bryn's here. <laughs> thinking about runes. You are. You're thinking on runes. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> Vic, as you're thinking about runes, Bryn, you see in the sky 
Um, off to your left. Um, a few dark clouds sort of swirling a little bit. Like the beginnings of a storm. But you're not too sure and you can't really tell what direction they're going in. It's just um, kind of there. It's separate enough away from the shimmer in the sky that you're hoping that you could avoid it. Can we divert the course just ever so slightly so we make a bigger like we can make sure that we avoid it. Just make a bigger what is it? Bigger arc. Circle, yeah, arch. That's what I was looking for. Arch around it. You can try. Okay, I'm trying to just ever so slightly, just a few degrees. I'm trying to tilt the sail. Watch out, Vic. She's trying to steal the boat. <laughs> Can't get this one in your bag, can you? <laughs> <laughs> this is where a folding boat would have been very funny. <laughs> <laughs> Where the boat's a mimic. Damn it, stop giving away the surprise. Well, Skull <laughs> made it, so that would be Skull's fault. The mimic lord. <laughs> Whoops, Fire, I accidentally made it. a mimic instead. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, yeah, you can kind of try and divert slightly, you know, make a bit more of a curve going inland. Um, both of, well, actually, whichever one do you want, make a survival check for me. Uh, mine isn't very good, and I think mine we probably know that. Mine isn't either, but it's not terrible. Uh, um, yours is probably better than mine, I'm going to guess. All right, I'll do it then. Better than mine. Okay. okay. With a 16, that's not bad. You're fairly confident in that... Um, with the adjustments of the sails and everything, you've managed to not necessarily bring you too far off course to extend the journey too much. Uh, okay. Oops. Um, another couple of hours pass and we change scenes. Oh dear, it's giving me that feeling. Getting a fuzzy feeling. I'm getting like in the, the meg. Bad feel like it's going to come out from the bottom. <laughs> It'll be Hold fine. On. What possibly got... could possibly go wrong? Whoops. Who got swallowed by a high dragon? It was Aqua. Aqua? Yeah, it was Aqua. Yeah. He stuck his head in water. Like, come on. No, no, I know. Brit is asking that because I wasn't there. <laughs> oh. I'm firmly in the middle of the boat. Oh no, Steve. Grin, you're falling off. <laughs> so, so <laughs> I don't need to do that. I wanted to actually say that I am sitting on the side of the boat and letting my feet dangle over the edge into the water. Wanted to say that, but actually fell out of reality. <laughs> yeah. It goes gravity. <laughs> Okay, I'm maybe, tired on my way. Uh, maybe at the back or on the side. I don't know physical which one is better and will not drag me off the boat, but you know. Probably the side. Okay. Vix tied himself with rope to the mast so that he won't, you know, go too far if he falls off. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, which, you know, might be wise, might not be. Who knows? We'll see. Um, another few hours pass and... The glow in the sky is getting bigger as the sort of sun travels over the sky, like sort of does its sort of usual trajectory through space. Um, the, the storm that you saw, uh, Bryn, Jesus, I went through every name like Bryn, <laughs> Nell, Athena. <laughs> um, it's 
currently still in place. It doesn't seem to have moved any closer or further away. Okay. But it is still firmly within vision, even after your diversion. Um, the diversion would have added another sort of half an hour to an hour, maybe, onto the journey. Okay. But in the grand scheme, it's not that end of the world. The... Um, sorry. sorry, go on. No, no. No, I wanted, to, I wanted to ask whether is it actually a storm or is it some sort of Lord of the Rings situation where it's a bunch of birds flogging into the sky? Uh, make a nature check. I feel like if anyone would know Lord of the Rings, it's definitely Bryn. Mm. I feel like Bryn's more Lord of the Flies. That's <laughs> Um... It doesn't look like it. It does look like um, a sort of weather event. Okay. From your limited nautical experience, but also having seen storms on land, you know, mm -hmm. you do recognize it. And In my extensive history of adventuring, I have been on a few boats, but not many. True. I've been on more boats. True. Okay, your your stint ends, and it's time for Aqua and Scott to take over. Um, like you've all been awake and aware the whole voyage so far, so you know the storm off to the left of the ship isn't a surprise to the two of you. You've seen it. You've been had it pointed out to you. Um. But, you know, you've been keeping a, and you've been focusing on whatever you've been doing. Um, the the craft itself is holding up surprisingly well. And there's been a fairly consistent wind that has managed to propel you a bit slower than you would hope. But overall, not too bad. Um at this point, I will need Aqua or Skull to roll roll a d12 for me, please. Oh. Uh, d12. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me just Is there such back. a thing as water dragons? Can we roll a water dragon? I don't like this. Please roll, roll. well. <laughs> please roll well. You don't know what well would be, but please roll well. I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, a three is a very lucky number. Ugh. Yeah. If you're a high dragon, you would have eaten something. <laughs> yeah. That's what we got. Free dragon tails. How many heads do you want on your hydra? <laughs> hmm. How many... How many fish does Vic find today? Or fish today and we can eat for dinner. That's a good thing. How many things does Bryn steal? <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't steal things. <laughs> she borrows them permanently, that's all. Right. Okay. Um, as Bryn and Vic settle down and sort of begin a long rest, Aqua and Skull, you are taking up the reins. Aqua, your just general proficiency with sailing basically makes this a non-event for you. This is like the easiest gig you've ever taken, <laughs> essentially. You're just sailing a small craft over a fairly quiet and easy to control piece of water. Okay. Um, however, I do need you to roll um, a history check for me, please. Me? Yeah. Oh. Can I have the history of that water, please? Uh, that's not bad. But this specific body of water's history. Okay. <laughs> Settle in. Um, no. You've been keeping an eye on that storm. And through your experience of um, sailing and the two or so years that you spent on the Windsinger, any storm you saw of this size and sort of proportion moves. Usually, that's the sort of that's the deal with it. It kind of is propelled through nature to expend its energy. 
Um, any storm that stays still usually is not natural. Okay. Given what you've heard about the world tree and what it could potentially be used for and what it potentially is being used for, it's quite possible that It's quite possible that things are coming through. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love how like Yathena's the one that's like, ooh. Mm. No, yes. no, I mean no. I was like, <laughs> she, she what does sweet, that mean? Man. She's staying up to steal stuff. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this time she's stealing the information. First of all, I didn't know I wasn't un- I wasn't muted. Second of all, I was making a huh? what the fuck is going on sound. <laughs> It's fine. it's fine. It was just funny because it's like it's just the way it just the way it sounded as it came through. It was like, hmm. No, it's fine. Um. So you've been hearing about how world trees can potentially be used as um, portals or gates to other realms, and there's a sort of a niggling thought in the back of your head of things that you've heard rumors of from other realms more particularly your realm yeah that you know could potentially be causing something like this and it's not good let's put it that way (laughs) never is I, i very rarely give you good things The, yeah. de- the, um, the, the details are a bit hazy, um, as you know. They're generally rumor, hearsay, myth, legend, that sort of thing. Um, but if it is, th- if it is the thing, um, then there could be a problem. I'm gonna have to Discord it to you. I'll Discord it to you, but I have to do it on my other fo- on my phone because I can't use Discord on my okay. PC. Okay. Well, I'll relay most of that and what I actually understand and know to Scold. Okay. Huh. Okay, well, not what I really want to hear when I'm on a boat of my own construction, but uh, is there any way we can get around it? I mean, wider berth. Mm. Do you think there'll be a path through, or do you think it's all encompassing if it's man made, if you will? If someone's trying to it's keep us out. Probably go through it, but it'd be dangerous. Mm. Is there anything we can do to sort of reduce the likelihood of us dying horrifically? Uh, no, on that one. Hmm. Well then, Actually, I, I see. We need to build a bigger boat. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> Suggest that before we go through it and before it gets real bad, we wake everybody up to uh, so that they're ready to brace for any harsh weather. Wait, so I know this is a rumor or a, like a fairy tale story? Both. You just sent me. Both. Oh. Well, Skull's already gave concern. Maybe I shouldn't worry him with it just yet. <laughs> but say that oh, out loud so that he gets worried oh, yeah. preemptively. <laughs> Adds the uh, ex- what is it? suspense. Yeah, it'd be fine. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Don't worry, I'm just moving. There we go. A bit more in the water. In the water. In the water. <laughs> you are blimey, it's your water. <laughs> <laughs> the accent backfired. <laughs> so, Hackward's Gold, how would you like to proceed? Well... I suppose we can try and look around a bit to see if there is any breaks in this storm, but I don't want to deviate too much because otherwise we're just going to add a lot of time to our journey. 
time is of the essence. I think we can go through it. Or at least get close to it. Yeah. Okay, well, how about we just take a little bit of a look around and then we'll go closer. If there's no ends in sight. I mean, at this point, you're not necessarily needing to go near it. Because it is off in the distance and it's away from where you're going. Um, oh, okay. Oh, it's away from where we're going, okay. Then. Yeah, so that it's not like it's, you know, rolling towards you or you're fl like sailing into it. But <clears throat> you do have, it is, it's kind of just there in your periphery, you know. I just then say to Skull to keep an eye on it, and uh, I'll keep an eye on the sea, just so. <laughs> you keep an eye on that cloud, I'll keep an eye on where we're going. Um, Perfect. Okay. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong from here? In that case, Skull, roll a survival check for me. I... Survival of the fittest. Nice. Um, surprisingly, despite not really having much experience, but also having Aqua here does help, um, you manage to keep the craft on the straight and narrow, um, heading towards your target, not necessarily struggling too much. It's quite good. Uh, however, at this point, it is starting to get dark, which... In some ways, it's good. It makes your target more visible. The um, glowing lights of the world tree ahead of you are very prominent. It's quite, it's quite an appealing sight. In fact, I can probably do something to replicate it. Uh, it's the only thing Aqua can see. Literally. <laughs> um. Please hold. Let's do. Maybe. And then do something like. We'll go with purple. I like purple. Well, that's an. Yeah, go with that. There we go. So, from what you can see right now, that's basically what it looks like. It's just oh. sort of like dancing light emanating from a distance aurora borealis at this time of the month <laughs> <laughs> who knew who knew yeah. um okay, so well. yeah your your shift ends it's aqua and vix turn not aqua brin and vix turn yeah. again um aqua and scold you are getting me. very tired <laughs> He, he, did you say you're tying yourself up to? I'm tying, I'm tying myself just to the the the, uh, the mast in the centre of the ship. Okay, so now there's two two ropes, one holding Vic, one holding Scold. Before I wake anyone up, mm -hmm. I'm gonna cast alarm on myself. <laughs> okay. You did this the first night you arrived at the shoreline, right? Um, yes. But we were there for three days and it only lasts eight hours. Yeah, so did you do that every night you slept or did you just do that first night? No, I only did it first night. Okay. Okay. So, Vic and Bryn, you are woken up by Aqua and Scold. Yeah, I'll put on my um, I'll put on my arm armor again because I don't want to be without my armor, and I just have some food, have a ration, and look out at the dark water. Yeah, I'll get my armor on as well, and probably retry a rune of like strength for the boat or something. Okay, roll an intelligence check for me again, please. Plus eight for your expertise. 
<laughs> Last page. That's better. Oh, um, <clears throat> having repeated it now, um, you know, working on it for a couple of days and then implementing it, you am able to not recarve, but um, revigorate reinvigorate Ooh. the original rune okay. which you immediately feel makes it more strong and durable you're fairly confident this one will last for the rest of the journey okay and I won't tell anyone <laughs> no that's fine um, <laughs> um, you're fairly confident it will last for the rest of the journey and you you're pretty certain that it will be virtually indestructible as a as a as a craft as an object as a, a thing but it would take it would take fairly like monumental levels of power to destroy it okay just from pretty just, proud of myself but you know yeah i mean i mean <laughs> like your room crafting at this point is not insignificant. Wow, such a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> You're not insignificant, all right? Okay. As a celebration, celeb celebratory drink, I will get my purifying goblet out of my bag, which I also ruined, mm -hmm. and dip it in the water and then get some fresh purified water. Beautiful. It's cool and fresh and very hydrating. Hmm. Very good. Hmm. Does anyone else need some water, by the way? Have we got water skins? I have a water skin. I'll take some water. Okay. I'll help fill up Bryn's uh, water skin as well. Okay. And the other two are still going to interrupt them. <clears throat> Maybe on the crossover. On shifts. Shift swap. I'll fill up theirs. Makes sense. Makes sense. And just eat rations, I guess, because we can't really put a fire on here. I don't really fancy raw fish. I know sushi, but... <laughs> nah, I'm alright. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, rations are there for a reason, you know? You may as well use them if you've got them. Yeah. Um. Okay. In that case, I will need a survival check from one of you, please. And a perception... No, a d12 from one of you first, and then a survival check. I roll survival, you roll d12. Yeah. All right, thank you. Nice. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Two hours into your journey, or into your shift, um, you've experienced nothing but smooth water from this point. Just enough of a breeze to get you going at a steady pace, but other than that, no real disturbances or issues with um, you know, moving at all. The As the night has set in, you've been able to look up and see through fairly clear skies, the same sort of explosions of light and also the same shadows just flying towards the world tree. At the two hour point, there's a kind of a slight bump in the raft, in the craft. And then another one. As the water goes from being almost deadly, like, flat, or as flat as you can be while also still moving, to starting to get a bit choppier. But, like... Oh, like a pattern to it, or was it like there's creatures that are creating something kind of thing, or was it just like the wave, like waves from somewhere? You can make a perception check to look if you like, or investigation. I will not put my head. Um, <laughs> I will do perception, but my head is not going in the water. Okay. So, you know. Nineteen. Um, <clears throat> in the deep navy black water beneath you. You don't see any creatures. Um, 
you see the occasional reflection of the explosions of light and a few stars reflected in the, in the surface, but that's disturbed more as more of these ripples emanate outwards. And they are coming from rather unusually this direction. My arrows are never like so satisfactorily <laughs> arrowy. <laughs> Do the point first, then the lion. Point first, then the lion. Like, what is that? What is that? What even is that? Please hold. You know Watch what direction the they're coming from. This is more just for my um, own personal. Jesus Christ. You know what direction they're coming from. <laughs> there we go. Right. Beautiful. And then. <laughs> anyway, from that direction. Okay. So they're actually kind of buffeting the craft quite heavily because they're coming from a different angle to the tr way you're traveling. <clears throat> mm. And over the course of about 15 minutes, they get progressively more intense. Do they seem to, to come from one singular point or are they moving with us? No, they're moving as almost like you would expect waves, like a tidal flow to work, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So they're actually kind of all coming out as, as one. And then, you know, a small gap and then another. Like in the sense of, okay, imagine I drop a stone into the water. Right? And then it ripples. Does it rip from that singular point? Or does it seem to just be waves? It just seems to be waves at the moment. There's no way to tell if it's a um a disturbance in the surface um emanating from a point or if it's um just a general tidal flow it's too dark to see basically i wake aqua up and i ask him because he should know okay i kick him <laughs> i kick him awake <laughs> oi blue uh, blue man there's some so waves you were trying to steal my stuff. No, I'm trying to wake you up. There's some there's some waves in, in the water. Can you tell whether they're made by something in the water or whether they're just waves? Um, uh, let me give me a sec. Let me go check. I guess I go to put my hand over the edge, put it in the water, just to feel, see if okay. I can tell the difference. As your fingertips break the surface of the water. Make an insight check for me. In the water! <laughs> right. History check on water, now an insight check. Can I, can I, can I sort of assist? I mean, it's an insight check, so maybe not, but by. Can I assist him by stating my suspicion? I'm, I'm too on... quiet. I'm too asleep. I'm exhausted. What would you be like? Your suspicion isn't necessarily. No, <laughs> but okay. mainly because you're sus like you, your suspicion is what made him put his like made him check. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um. Um. Aqua, as you kind of break the surface of the water with your fingertips, nothing happens. Yeah, I just. Just feels like up. waves. Just feels like a tidal tidals, like a tidal system. Bryn, they're just waves. Could be because we're getting closer to the the tree. Magic from it. I don't Force believe it. I, I think I think there's something weird about this. Why now? Why in the middle of the it's not an ocean, but why in the middle of the lake? Nah. There's something weird about this. Well, I'm going back to sleep. Yeah, give it back. Once you sort of lie down, about 30 seconds after you've tested the water, a particularly big, um, I'm going to say wave because I don't really know what it'd be called, like buffets the boat, like craft, and sort of actually sends it shaking, like 
almost sends it off course. Um, it would wake Scold up and particularly disturb Aqua, who hasn't quite yeah. gone to sleep yet. See? See, this is not normal. And I, okay. I, I anchor myself and hold myself to the boat, and I'm also, just <laughs> in case, I'm, I'm holding a fly spell, and I believe it should be fifth level if I want to cast it on all five of us. Well, I kind of get up and be like, well, that definitely felt not like a wave, but more of something hitting the bottom of our raft. Don't say that. Please Red, don't which... say that. With your passive perception, roll another perception check for me. And then, can we still see that storm, or is it just too dark to see? It's funny you ask that, because it has yes. been too dark to see it. Okay. Um, but Bryn, with you know your general suspicion of these sort of ripples happening all of a sudden, and um, that particularly big one sort of hitting you, you look in, you look off to the. Um, port side, your left side which is the direction also that the ripples are coming from and you can see distinctly that there's a an awful, like the clouds are getting closer, moving in your direction there doesn't seem to be any rain that you can see but mm -hmm. now with the 24 especially you can almost hear the tornado like winds that no. are accompanying it. okay I, I i point everyone in that direction something's coming storm something we better brace ourselves yeah that's not good right. we steer away from it so the wind takes us further away we can always come back around maybe um depends on how quickly it's coming towards us really where can we can we feel wind coming from that direction? Currently, no. What? But you can't tell specifically how far away it is. Um, like, your your sense of depth perception, I guess, is the word, is actually okay. kind of thrown off a little bit just because of the dark. Okay. So, this... Never told Skull this earlier because I didn't want to worry him. And it, um, by people, it is still a fairy tale. But there is a legend of a creature, Leviathan, uh, that travels in uh, horrendous storms that have been described. I'm very much confidence here. And. Well, I'm not saying it is that. I'm just saying with all the other crazy stuff I've heard as rumours and have come true, I might as well just get all, like, my old children's books out. <laughs> Look for all the fairy tales, see what's going to hit us next. Great. Is this so, yeah. creature mm, hostile? Or is it usually keep to itself um they're very hostile i believe hmm. i wanna a scold wouldn't be wearing his armor right because he just slept yeah no i kept my armor on but oh. I no you myself. can't you can't sleep in your armor you can Maybe. but you gain exhaustion oh, okay then no <laughs> um <laughs> I don't know. Mom, very well. I give, um, I just precautiously, I give gold. I still have all of. No, I don't. I was about to say I still have all of your stuff, but I don't. Um, precautiously, I give gold bardic inspiration. Um, I have uh... a song called Bardic Inspiration. <laughs> Uh, how long does counter charm last? What? Okay, didn't want to work. Never mind. Put that back on. I don't know. 
Um, what's it say? It doesn't say anything. Cat's charm. During that time. So as an action, I can... I can... As an action, I can perform, and during that time, you have advantage on being frightened and trapped. No point doing that now. I don't know if... Um, so at sixth, just... sixth level, you gain the ability to use musical notes or words of power to disrupt mind-influencing effects. As an action, you can start a performance that lasts until the end of your next turn. During that time, you and any friendly creature within 30 feet of you have advantage on saving throws against being frightened or charmed. Yeah, yeah there, it's no point doing that as a precaution. No. Because I don't know what's going on. Okay, that's... Uh, you know what? I'm going to give all of you Bardic Inspiration. I have enough of them. Uh, all of you get one use of body inspiration for the next 10 minutes or so. Uh, I'll just mark them off manually. And by 10 minutes mm -hmm. or so, she means 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. No, I like oh, the sofa. Go for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's that's my all of my preparation that I'm doing. Still holding the fly spell, just in case. Because I can't see what level did you say it needed to be at? A uh, six. It needs to be six because it's a. You don't have six level spells. I do not. I have six level spells. No. Wait, no, it's. Because you didn't level Bar up. Bard, you leveled yeah, up okay. into rogue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, then I, I, I heard you say it. I needed to clarify that you hadn't like misspoken. I am holding it at fifth level then because I know Akko can swim. So I'm, if something happens, I'll cast it on. Uh, Golden Rick and me and myself. You and yourself. Yeah. Okay. Me, myself, and I. Perfect. The That's only three people that I get. I was going <laughs> to say the only three people that matter. All right. Um. A few minutes pass as the three of you are all kind of buffeted awake and, or well, buffeted awake and also buffeted to more attention. You can see now that there's flashes of lightning. Just erupting all through the air to the left of you. Um, rumbles of thunder. The wind is picking up quite severe severely. Um, you are picking up speed as a result. Um, you are going, I'd say, like 30 feet a second. You're now going 90, to put it in D&D &D terms. Can yeah. I then, with seeing the lightning protection from energy on the boat yeah should be able to and I want to have it to be resistant to ah, lightning it has to be a creature the boat's a creature mm. sentient <laughs> can we get I, I'm, I'm quickly drawing eyes on it <laughs> we've turned it into a creature what's it, its name quickly anything that has a name is we are attached to <laughs> Boaty McBoatface. Boaty McBoatface, of course. But is it a boat or is it a raft? It's a catamaran, it's isn't it? it? It's Ralph from The Simpsons. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. You're in danger. <laughs> I'm in danger. <laughs> Um, okay. A couple more minutes pass, and Aqua, I need you to make a perception check with advantage, please. Um, okay. At this point as well, you're all struggling to nice. hold on. Like the, the, the craft is basically up and down quite severely. Sort of Before you continue, around. can I just ask why we didn't build barriers on this so we <clears> don't <throat> just fucking roll off? Imagine. Because we're not that smart. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, you were on a literal ship with railings and you still fell off. Mm, yeah. So, you know, it's not a guaranteed success. Anyway with my guaranteed success in perception not necessarily <laughs> guaranteed success just you know um with a 26 in one of the flashes of light you're pretty sure you see something that 
it's difficult to make out the shape and the um the form of the thing you see but in amongst the storm clouds and in and amongst the um zoom back out again thank you sorry no that's not your fault that's forge just being like brin spoke <laughs> um like in amongst sort of both in the clouds and also floating on the surface of the water almost like it's reflected between the two like there's a reflection point between the two so that you can see one you can see it in both but you can't make out which is where it actually is does that make sense yeah so it's almost like there's a mirror being held um above the water and it could either be in the water or in the sky you just can't tell okay <clears throat> it I it makes sense in my head, but it I can't explain it very well. I'm sorry. Okay. I somehow then rely it back to the group of what I just saw. <laughs> well and now Um But then once you kind of finished explaining and you look back and you point, you're all made fish like tremendously aware of what Ak was talking about because you all see it too. And it's think Chinese dragon, mm -hmm. sort of very serpentine, but on a scale that it's difficult to actually imagine. Um, It's so huge that it would, you know, it would dwarf even Asoa when you fought her in the vision, the Valkyrie vision. And it just seems to extend for miles and miles and miles behind. The head is the size of... three Kierdorals stacked on top of each other, roughly. <laughs> and it's just floating. Mouth opening occasionally, closing. Why is everything just... so big? And as it sort of gets closer, the storm seems to be in wrap in seems to encompass it. Um, and um, let me move you again. As you're kind of shifted forwards to here. The storm is... You can see now. Like, you can physically see the storm getting closer and closer and closer, along with the, whatever the creature is inside it. Um, and... The storm is maybe 10, 15 feet away from you. And just seems to continue moving. Zoom back out. And as it reaches you, this is more a visual representation of the storm, by the way, less necessarily anything particular. Um, it continues over you. By the time it like gets to the edge of the boat, you're all having to hold on for dear life. I need everyone to make a strength saving throw, please. If I um, if I make the strength saving throw, I let my spell go. Okay, you all have inspiration as well. I still need it. Advantage. Is that D ten? Yes. Yeah. Well, this isn't exactly tense. <laughs> and nineteen for me then. As okay, well. nineteen. The awkward moment when Aqua gets the highest. I know, I haven't <laughs> even had to use my uh, inspiration. And yeah, as I as I as I probably hold on, I let my thingy go. So 
you, you're casting fly or you're just dropping it? No, I'm casting fly. Okay, so Skold, Vic, and Bryn, you are now imbued with the ability to fly. Um, right. As the storm continues rolling forwards above you. Oops. Um, as it gets over you, as it basically encompasses you all, um, it's impossible to hear anything. You can't hear yourselves, let alone your friends. The howling winds are so loud that um, it's painful, almost. Um, the fact you can all fly kind of means it's good, but also it's six of one, half a dozen of the other, because one, it doesn't matter necessarily that you're th all flung off the craft. Um, because you're, many, you're all able to keep yourself above water. Well, the three of you are, anyway. Um, act where you're flung underwater. Um, but as you let go of the craft and are able to fly in the air, you're then unable to kind of keep control of yourself as you're just flung round in circles. Almost like literally being in a tornado. You're just circling round and round and round. And as... Um, everyone make a constitution saving throw. I say everyone, except for Aqua. We'll come to Aqua oh, okay. in a second. Constitution. Constitution. Saving throw. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, Vic and Bryn, <clears throat> just being flung around so much and just being circled up, upside down constantly and like in the same in a circle at the same like at the same time it's completely disorientating your brains are just turned to mush um you all essentially throw up you both essentially throw up and you are dizzy so you would have some kind of effect on you i don't really know but we'll think of that in a minute um scold you managed to hold it off slightly you're still being flung around and it's very disorientating. You have no real concept of where you are, but you're managing to hold your stomach. You're keeping yourself strong and fortified. Um, which is useful, because you manage to catch glimpses of the creature that you saw, and it just seems... just It doesn't seem to be taking any notice of you. In fact, it's past you, essentially. Oh. It just keeps moving on its journey, wherever it was going. But it just you just happened to be caught up in it. Um, but you can see that it doesn't seem to. It doesn't seem to be complete. You saw a physical representation of its head, which looked somewhat draconic, but also just. And big <laughs> so big you can't recognize the detail yeah basically um and the further along the body you got which was also quite reptilian and scaly but um also had no other real detail to it no fins no wings no legs or arms claws anything just a body very serpentine snake-like um the further along you get, you know, we're talking miles of body. God knows how far you've been flung away from it, from the craft. Um, it just seems to disapparate and disappear, you know, almost like it's unfinished or it's just not all there. Um, and continues to fly along. Aqua. Yes. You're flung underwater. You're flung off the boat. You have no, uh, you haven't sort of prepared to fly like Bryn or by Bryn from Bryn um, so as you lose grip of the craft you are flung off and underwater um, the water underneath is also being um, like riptide you know you're just being circled around and upside down and everything make a constitution saving throw too please okay you still have your inspiration if you need to Thank <laughs> you. 
which I probably do need to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. With an 11, you lose all sense of direction you are disorientated beyond anything um there's like you you are sick you are sick to the stomach um and this is something you've never experienced before and you have you lose track of time you have no concept of how long it is between being flung off the craft and regaining any form of uh, time. I'm going to make this a little bit disappear. And as you all are sort of re acquainted with um, your faculties and your sense of direction and the storm seems to have passed quite literally just passed conveniently as the song ends nice then your the three of you who can fly are at various points in the sky but anywhere between sort of 50 feet and you know, quarter of a mile even. Um, Aqua, you are somewhere underwater. This isn't necessarily a bad thing. You are okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But you don't really know where you are. Uh, uh, Bryn, Scold and Vic, make perception checks for me, please. I was going to say, I think me and... Rin were tied to the mast. You and Scold were tied to the mast. Oh. I wasn't, yeah. No, I wasn't. Uh, okay. Okay. That, make, still connected? that makes sense. That does make sense. We'll bring you back up here. Why did I cast fly on you then? No point then. I forgot about them being tied to the boat thing. <laughs> I mean, it might have I, mean, I, I was going to say, yeah. but... Uh, Probably good just in case it did get shattered. Just make sure that you remember that I saved your life. Just uh -huh. so we can get more stuff for you to steal in the future. <laughs> I know. In that case, I need you to both make dexterity saving throws, please. Dexterity. Oh, wait, advantage. Let me re roll that. I don't know why I did. You don't need to re roll that. He does. He rolled with <laughs> advantage. Oh, he rolled with advantage. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Lord. I understood. Oh, I have advantage. Let me reroll. Yeah, that's what I heard, but I, yeah, it's fine. Um, Scold, while you were able to keep control of your um, mentalness, oh, no, you, while you were able to keep control of your kind of um, combobulation, um, Vic, you were not. You were very discombobulated. As you were both flung up in the air, the craft came with you. So while you were both tied together with 50 foot of rope, um, what that didn't help was... Um, so with 50 feet... Uh, uh, Scold, can you move yourself here? Move yourself. Let's see. Just... Oop, thank you. And Vic, you are somewhere up here. About there. Thank you. Um, Vic, you took two hits from the craft. Um, the first time, whacked you right over the head, which kind of didn't help with your combobulation. You take 13 points of bludgeoning damage. Guessing still halved. For the... If you're resistant, then I've yeah. Got my armor on. yeah. Yeah, then it's fine. And then the second time... You take uh, 15 points of bludgeoning damage, again, half to seven. Um, and Jeez. that definitely didn't help with keeping yourself situated. But you are both tied to the craft. And funnily enough, because you are both flying, but you got flung off in different directions, it's kind of just like 
floating in the air between the two of you. So you've at least kept hold of where the craft is, which is really helpful because I was going to be very mean about it. Um, (laughs) And Bryn, off in the distance, because the craft is floating there between them, you can see the craft. You can't necessarily see them. Um, But you you had a really good roll of 27. So you can see the craft. It's a fair way ahead, a fair way in the distance. And it is the pitch black of night. So it's quite difficult, but you have the help of the um, world trees emanation. Mm -hmm. And um, it also kind of stands out, you know. I am. Yeah, I I fly back to the raft. Cool. Um, So you fly back to the raft. I'm assuming the two of you fly back in as well. I don't know. Yeah, we we, 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 Yeah, we should probably fly down first. Yeah. (laughs) So it doesn't just plop <laughs> and drag us down with it so we'll discuss that as we're flying kind of down yeah. and towards i mean I'm technically had... yeah. technically the okay. two of you also have your um psychic communication so you could easily be like um, you know oh. to me to you oh yeah <laughs> to me, to you, to me. <laughs> it's the last time we used that <laughs> it's been a long time <laughs> <laughs> I'm always here to remind you of things you've forgotten about, if I remember. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so we chuckle brothers it down. You do. And also, it's very helpful to try and find Aqua as well, because currently nobody is aware of where Aqua is, not even Aqua. Um, <laughs> however, mm. please bear with me a moment. Um, I should get my fishing rod out and try to catch him. Wow. <laughs> Um, right. Aqua. Yes. We're going to... I need to swap scenes again, damn it. Um, not that one. Not that one. This one. Right. Um, Aqua, while you're underwater, I need you to make another perception check for me, please. Ooh, okay. Nice. What was that total? 25? Yeah. Um, despite it being nighttime and you not really having dark vision, there's something underwater that catches your attention and you're not entirely sure what it is. shiny <laughs> kind of yeah hmm I guess, I guess i really don't know where i am i'll swim to it okay okay in that case boop. <gasps> guys i oh. did it i found a lantus <laughs> And you've taken us down with you. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, no. You're it's fine. It's a party spawn thing where you just come with me as soon as I enter the door. It's War Tales. You're being dragged behind. Yeah. Um, through your communications, um, you can, like, Aqua can say, okay, you know, I'm safe, but I found something. Um, <clears throat> there's still no indication of how far away he is from you. Um, but Aqua through the slight glistening you can see um, under the under the sea under the sea it's um, I'm trying to get this back sorry um, and because of the sort of light that's being projected from the world tree you're able to see the glimmers and it does look like a sunken city or an um like an underwater city that's been abandoned or lost or deserted In the grand scheme, in the grand scheme, it looks different from anything you or your people would have built. 
it's not in the same sort of um, style. But you know of um, Tritons, for example, or um, sea elves who kind of try to con like do sort of generally conform to um, you know dry land civilization styles and stuff such. They could potentially have built a place like this. I mean, I don't really know what to do here. I'd let the guys know what I've found. Okay, okay. At this point, right, let's... Go on. you're fairly confident you're quite deep. You know, you know, it's not like you're just underneath the surface or anything. You are mm -hmm. under the under the surface quite a lot, quite deep down. Um, but at some point in the past, a civilization of beings built a city, and then it sunk. Between then and now, it either sunk or whomst ever built it. Abandoned it. Okay. We can't see this, yeah. No, you can't actually see much at all underneath the, underneath the water. It's still pretty black, like navy blue, black, deep blue, deep navy black. Night time as well, right? Still, yeah. Um. I'll, uh, wait, I do have sending, don't I? I do believe I have sending. Did I take it off? I hope I didn't take it off. No, I have sending. I'm sending a message to Aqua because we can't see him. Right? Mm -hmm. um, are you still alive? Wait. Uh, I'm, I'm trying a message first, which is 120 feet. Nothing. Well, then I'm sending a message. <laughs> Are you still alive? Please tell me you're still alive. Yeah, I'm still alive. I'm somewhere deep underwater, and I found this abandoned city. And that's how many letters you get. Or how many words you get. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, that works. Are you speaking uh, to Aqua, I just checked with Aqua if he's still alive. He's still alive. He found a city, apparently. We can do it with these. Th Actually, do we, do we need to be of a certain range for our earpiece things? No. Oh, I forgot you have them. <laughs> you guys yeah. forgot you have them. <laughs> Only I, until I... we remember. <laughs> oh, got reminded. But you maybe. Break and break. Yeah. So we can talk to him about you having two spells. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Good that you say this 18 months after we've met. Yeah, you, know, you knew this. Yeah. I probably didn't. Mm, I think you did. Nah. <laughs> I think we discussed it before and you were like the odd one out kind of thing. Yeah. I have, you know how you sometimes just try to forget trauma? That's the same. Mm. <laughs> we also don't like to go in each other's heads too much, you know, respect. So we don't use it that much. Just sending a message is not like reading <laughs> thoughts or anything. I know, I know. It's intrusive a little bit though, right? Forcefully cramming something. I asked him head. whether he was still alive. <laughs> I wasn't asking him what he was wearing. <laughs> this situation's is... Never... Anyway. Well, you knew what he was wearing. He <laughs> never changes his clothes. <laughs> I can't change my clothes. <laughs> They're bound to me. Um, do you want to cut oh, this message to Aqua then? I would like. Do you, do you, so you're under the water. Are you going to come back up? Well, I technically don't know how far I am from where we were. I saw this like glow and followed it, and it brought me to this city. How is it up there? Um, karma now, the thing's past us. Wherever that was. We're obviously insignificant. Yeah. I mean... 
this whole place is underwater, so it's unlike you guys will be able to come see how beautiful this area is. Not unless you've got some magics that can help with that. Or po we got potions? I don't think I haven't got any potions to help. I don't nah, think I do. I don't have any potions that could help you breathe. Or to breathe. Mm. Nope. Yeah. Mm. I'll tell you what we could do. I mean, we could maybe at least mark it on, on the, the map that you got when we get back to the surface and maybe look up history on it in the future. Come back, maybe? Yeah. I suppose I could have a look around just to see if I can see anything like of importance or anything that stands out that I can keep uh, track of. You'll be on your own though. If there's some bad things down there. Uh, I should be alright. I won't go exploring too much. I guess so, but you have been unconscious more than the rest of us in the past. And still survived. Practice in sleep. <laughs> well, um, if you want to find where we are, I mean, I don't know. Uh, Bryn, do you have, like, a light spell? Nah, unfortunately not. Hey. I mean, I can use my lights. <laughs> yeah, I think we could drop, like, a stone or something with a light spell on it. <laughs> Just, and he'd be like, oh, over there. Let's just come to the surface, or if you want to look around, look around, but... I mean, we can't come down and help. Yeah, well... I won't be long. I mean, 10, 15 it, minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose no, it's 10, 15 know. minutes. It's like, 10, 15 minutes, sure, but then... You have no concept just, of how far away you are. Yeah, yeah, just to let you know, the boat's going to still be moving. Tell him... Tell him uh, to let you know when he's coming up to the surface, I can ensure that he finds us. Because do we have an anchor or? We probably do don't. Matter? We can't just stop. We take the sail down and stop it from. Yeah, let's do that. At least it won't, you know, at least it won't move that much if we take the sail. If you guys move too much, I can just swim in your general direction. <laughs> Not far than the boat, though. Actually, at the rate the boat was going, he could probably just about keep up. Okay. He's got a swim speed of 30 feet, and the boat was going about 30 feet per roundish equivalent speed. So. Okay, so if we put the, sail, the, the sails up, then it would, like, what, go down to about 5 or 10, maybe? Or. Yeah, you could, you could crew. I mean, you could make sure the boat doesn't go too fast and, you know, keep it at a slower speed if you want to. Okay. okay. Yeah. As a well, as a quick point, uh, Vic, your rune seems to have done a top notch job because the oh boat, yeah. the craft is still in in one piece despite having gone through a literal storm of mag like massive magnitude biblical and... almost yeah and also being dragged apart by two fairly chunky strong creatures thank you you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> uh good job on the the boat gold it seemed to do quite well no thank you i'm surprised it managed to stay intact to be honest with you hmm. must have good favors on our side <laughs> and we're all alive as well Mick. And Scold, in fact. Actually, all four of you. Okay. At this point, <clears throat> um, you hear a voice pop into your head that it takes you a few moments to place. Um, Vic, you pick it up a bit quicker. Um, but the other three, you kind of get there eventually. It's a, a voice you haven't heard for a while. Been maybe six weeks since you've heard the voice, since you've heard from the person. It's one of your... Boy! Hi it's not boy. No, sorry. We haven't been even on the road for six weeks, right? No. Okay. Um, It's from one of your hirelings. Oh. Uh. This one in particular, you remember, is Jealousy. A 
And the voice okay. comes through. You're right, boss. I, uh, just wanted to let you know that, uh, we've, uh, completed the task you sent us for. But also, we've, uh, picked up a straggler on the way. Says he knows one of you. Says he's your brother. He's Le brother my brother? No, no. Scold. Oh. Says he wants to talk to you at earliest convenience, but we also have been informed that you've gone afar, so whenever is best for you. Um, when okay. Yeah. Gold, your brother? Hi. I didn't think... Well, I knew that he was still alive, but... Technically, you weren't sure. Yeah. The last no, that's you, what I was... The last you heard, he was um, in Voltaire, I think. Mm. Um, yeah. On, on Karasgard. Oh, no, no. Um, which, you know, is now no longer sort of standing. It's been crushed and destroyed. Um... Okay, while, that's good news. Yeah, maybe stay at home base, I guess. Mm. Compass, that's the place. Yeah. Compass. It's been... I, I feel like I made this joke before, and I feel like it's going to be very old, but is it called Compass because we're the navigators? Yes. And okay, because good. It was, and because of... What was it again? And because... It's ba basically the motto of the place is come pass through. Oh, that's, that's it. Okay. Maybe there's two things. Yeah. Okay. That sounds just as bad as me naming Mo Dam Copper. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing as bad as you calling yourself Aqua. <laughs> or Grant. Or Granite. <laughs> or, um, like, whoever. Like, or, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I guess we'll see them when we come back then. Yeah, right, I'm just very uh, surprised. I'm good. It's a good surprise, but uh, okay. Was He's he on Karis Guard? Is that a question to me or to everyone? Sorry. I think we've been. Uh, no, uh, was he on Karasgard, your brother, when everything went down? Yes, yes. Last time I checked, anyway. We don't tend to travel much outside of Karasgard. Okay, and he, you haven't heard from him since? No, no, is I this the, Is this the first person that we've heard of to get out of Karasgard? <laughs> I mean, kind of. It depend you know it depends on when he left. Because yeah, yeah. you know, if you've got a lot of refugees from Karasgard, but they managed to get out sort of, you know, in the first six weeks. Um since then you haven't heard of anybody getting out. Mm -hmm. Except for Skold, who got in and out somehow. <laughs> Okay, interesting. We'll deal with that when we're back. Mm. But that's that's good news. That's for, great. I'm so pleased for you, genuinely. Thank you. It's uh, it's a lot to take in, but I look forward to meeting up with them again. There's a lot to discuss, and <laughs> I feel like uh, yes, it's been too long. What's your brother's name? <clears throat> Let me figure that one out for you. <laughs> it's in. It's, it's somewhere in the messages we've sent. I just can't look because I can't go on Discord. Okay, it's fine. I, uh, you'll tell me at another point. You don't need to look it up now. So you've just had a call from Jealousy, one one of the members of your hireling, one of your hirelings that's gone off as a group, 
Um, you set them off to do something fairly mundane, nothing massive, but um, most of what you've kind of been trying to do is secure the area from threats that you've heard of or met before, things like rogue goblins or, um, you know, things like that, nothing massive. Um, but they've also been also tasked with keeping an eye out for refugees and sort of pointing them in the right direction, which is obviously what they've been doing. And now, Skull, do you have a fairly good idea? Well, you have a very good idea of the fact your brother's alive and also where he is. Um, first definitive idea you've had for, you know, good, nearly, well, not quite two years, but 18 months at least, where, not 18 months, 16 months, from the last time you heard of him when you were in Kier um, the fact you came over to Camblesia in the first place to go and see him, and then cool. so it kind of got swept up and diverted away. Um, Aqua. Yes. We come back to you. Um, are you exploring the abandoned city? Yeah, for about ten fifteen minutes. All right. Um, roll an investigation check for me, please. Oh, nice. We're doing well for that 20s today. <laughs> um, with a 22, you are picking up a lot of detail. Whoever lived here was a big fan of colour. Um, there seems to be murals and um, all forms of designs painted on the walls and passageways and even the ceilings of just nothing in particular. Some of them are shapes. Some of them are just people kind of represented in art, basically, be it portraits or, um, you know, landscape shots of lots of people lined up in a parade, that sort of thing. Um, any accompaniment of information seems to have been lost through time or just you know maybe it wasn't even there in the first place okay um but the people that are being represented look elven but they look young these these are <laughs> that's the wrong word um the paintings themselves, the pictures, the drawings, while still very well maintained, look old. And the people in them don't seem to be representing anybody who would be considered, you know, middle-aged or older. Okay. Especially for any elven folk. So this place could potentially be, you know, millennia old. I mean, you're not exactly, you know, um, a history buff. But you know enough about how things work underwater, how well things can last, that sort of thing, that, yeah. you know... If humans made this, it would have deteriorated quite quickly. And for a city to either sink or just be, exist underwater, but still have um, decorations and such still standing, existing, it would have had to have been made by people who know how to make things last. Okay. Um, the architecture is fairly simplistic um, from any drawings in books that you have read or seen of elven structures this looks very primitive comparatively um, the statues are what what statues are still standing look very um, rough 
and there's not like there's not much given to um embellishment in the design of the craftsmanship um you know the buildings are fairly standard they're you know fairly square whereas elven towns and cities that you've heard of would always be quite flashy and um shapely okay that's all you can really discern yeah after that then i'd probably just just try and swim in an upper up to i guess get to the group all right um you quickly realize just how deep you are you are hundreds of feet down Ooh, okay. um probably maybe even close to a mile or two down well, not mile or two but mile mile and a half down that's like significantly deep but you soon start to see the light emanate from the world tree more strongly and you can actually now see the surface of the water reflecting the stars and the colors in the sky and then you break the surface make a perception check for me did he let us know beforehand whether he was I coming up? I would have said on the way up. All right. <laughs> Once he said that, I uh, would have waited, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds or so. Uh, and I would have, would have cast Fireball, like, a little bit away from us, obviously, so it wouldn't, cut, uh, wouldn't hurt us. But um... directly in the face. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, I, as far as I, I've actually, like, unrelatedly, I read about this. Fireball apparently does not penetrate further than, like, ten feet under the water or something. Anyway, um, just so you know, you hopefully you see the light flash. Although, if you're that deep, a mile deep, which is insane, there's probably not much light under there anymore. Um, but hopefully you'll see it. You don't see it. Okay. <clears throat> um, Let's see what I see then. How much? You don't see your friends, but behind you, like from if you're looking away from where the world tree is emitting its light, you don't see yeah. anything for miles. It's just flat water. But behind you, you can definitely distinctly see the protrusion of land. Where the light's coming from, yeah? Yeah. I mean, we're headed there. I will let Vic and Skull know through the headpiece that I actually can't see them and that I can see land. So I'm going to head in that direction and I hope that we can bump into each other. Okay. As you start swimming off in the direction, um, roll an athletics check for me, just to see if you can um, deal with the distance you're swimming. I'm in that. Yeah, you you surprise even yourself with how far you end up swimming. You're going for at least another four or five hours. But oh, I am. Eventually, you do come to the land. He always hey, rolls really good the strength land? check. Yeah. <laughs> Say again. Hey, I'm just secretly buff. <laughs> um, you are you are actually you are now on land again. Tired, you take a point of exhaustion, oh. but you are on land. The rest of you. You figure yourselves to be eight or nine hours away. Judging, um, you, you appear to have been blown off course. Um, more in a, so if, for example, if Aqua is like on land up here, comparatively, the three of you are like back here. Okay, Roughly. but we can head towards the light. Yeah, you still know where you're going. You can still shit. You can still see where you're going, and um, you know there doesn't seem to be any obstacles at the moment. 
We bust out the oars to get some more speed. Will that help? Yeah, you could power through. I'll blow on the sail. <laughs> Skull, do you want to get the oars out and just try to <laughs> yeah. make it and... Yeah. So how often do you contact us, by the way? Because like, you say you're going to keep swimming. I guess you tell us you got to land. Yeah, I would mention as soon as I get to land that I've actually hit and uh, if you guys can still hear me on the distance, be like, where are you guys? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, there's no there's no um, limit to the distance, it seems. Okay, yeah, I would have told Vic and Skull then that I've actually reached land at the where the light's coming from and are you guys lost or sink? <laughs> no, I think you got blown extra far away and we went in the opposite direction but we're by, on our way oh uh, yeah yeah by the time he contacts you you are saying saying he's made it you're about here comparatively so that's three hours or so no five hours or so sorry so you've made about half the distance really in fact we'll put you there we'll, we'll possibly be there in about four or five hours um Maybe just stay hidden in case there's anything bad there? Yeah, I'll uh, keep low and just quietly look around. I am going to actually use a greater restoration on myself to get rid of that point of exhaustion. Okay. Okay. As I know, I technically didn't get much sleep, so I kind of need this. <laughs> <laughs> Wise, wise. And then, Ooh. yeah, I'm just going to keep an eye out while I wait for the group. Okay. Are we okay. taking shifts so we can rest? I would advise it, because you've still got a fair while to go, and you've had... Um, who was on watch first, Vic? Because you were with... No. No. It was... I think... Vic it was skull it was skull first... yeah it was skull yeah, and aqua who were asleep so both Bryn and vic at this point you would need to rest because you'd be pushing exhaustion i'm yeah. immediately going yeah. to sleep i'm not i'm not even offering i'm just going to sleep mm. don't trust her <laughs> she's lulling you into a false sense of security <laughs> okay so old. me and Bryn will go to sleep but just shout if anything happens we'll get We'll just jump up. I'll do. I'll do. All right. Cool. So, Skull, roll a um, survival check for me, please. Okay. Damn it. Um... God damn it. <laughs> but I've been really clever. Fifteen, not bad. Okay, you managed to make pretty good time. What? Um, <laughs> they've rolled off in their sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to attach you to them. Um, so yeah, you make make pretty good time. There we go. And um, despite not really enjoying being on the water at all you're surprisingly proficient at it and you do make good time by the time it's time for Bryn and Vic to wake up you can see land not necessarily the same land as Aqua but you can see land who knows maybe Aqua has turned around maybe Aqua... said it was on land <laughs> maybe Aqua found different land and just doesn't quite understand what he's looking second at second world tree <laughs> oh yeah i forgot about the world tree <laughs> i was gonna say i followed the light and there's i can't see in the dark that's my only option <laughs> do we get a long rest um yes yeah. oh, do I... I need, oh, yeah, my I lost... back. yeah i lost a little bit of hp Bloody boat. Oh, you were close to death, mate. So close. Could have yeah, died. It's almost 10%. Almost 10%. No, not even 10%. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Just oh well. so close. That's not good. Um, uh, I wanted to roll a death save for fun, but it tells me I can't because I have a positive number of hit points. <laughs> case, it's like, what do you mean? <laughs> in that case. Just keep attacking Bryn until she's out of hit points. <laughs> in fact, yes, let's go for that one. Right, well, just I guess Skull can never rest and we'll, we'll finish yep. the, the length of the journey. Okay, please hold. For a moment. Are you sleeping, Aqua? No, no, I'm staying up while I'm on my own, but great restoration, so. The whole time? Yeah. Got about this... eight hours. Right. It's going to kill me. Aqua, roll a perception check and also a stealth check, please. Oh, T-Rex. Please. I want to fight a T-Rex. I don't want to murder it, though. All right. Oh, damn it. Um, please hold. Please hold. All right. Can I copy and paste this? Yes. Boop. Boop. Oh, that one. Da -da. Okay. I'm going to just put this. What? Come on. Right. In that case, back where you're there. Oh, not that one. I'm getting myself all tangled here. Sorry. Right. <clears throat> Aqua. You're on this. This is you. Obviously. <laughs> Don't know if wow. you know that. <laughs> um, Why am I blue? Good question. Why are you blue? You are always blue. <laughs> <laughs> God. So as you make land, you find a hiding spot, sort of up here slightly, slightly, settle in and hunker down, try and keep yourself as low and hidden as possible. Um, trying to keep an eye out throughout the night, the trees around you seem to hum. There's a literal hum coming from them. And oh. <laughs> as you're kind of like nestling into them for safety and for um like a hiding spot, they seem to emphasize and imbue no imbo Im they seem to just embolden your great restoration the exhaustion you felt seems to disappear completely um your tiredness just washes away the longer you're kind of leaning against these trees the ground beneath you is hard but um not in the same junk like not it's not the same that you were feeling you think are you okay sorry <laughs> <laughs> it's <was just> mesmerizing <laughs> I was distracted um, like whereas when you, when you were walking through the jungle the ground was soft and like really damp but here it just seems spongy almost in a strange sort of way and you do feel safe there are no obvious threats immediately coming at you or making themselves obvious and apparent. But, you know, you also kind of don't feel the need to necessarily keep yourself safe from them. Okay. 
And as you, like, keep updating your friends on your situation and get updates from them on theirs, you just feel warm and okay. I'm assuming it's a familiar feeling because of, uh, let's say, magic in the area, in the air. Magic in the air. Sort of, yeah. It's... Because... That would be like my village back home. <laughs> yeah, it's a familiar feeling, but it doesn't fit. It, it's a familiar feeling, but it doesn't feel the same, you know? Yeah. A, a familiar sensation with just different feelings built around it. Different taste. Yeah, exactly. Um, eventually, the three others finally make land. And you kind of get the same feeling. Well, two of you do. Rin and Scold. You just kind of feel warm and fuzzy and safe. Vic. Less so. But there's a definite peacefulness to the island. Hmm. Um, I guess we tie the boat up in case we need it again. Okay. Although, Bryn, you said you could teleport us back if need be. Uh, well, I can teleport us back to the Tower of the Moon Majors, yes. Yes, there it is. <laughs> Probably good. I'll put it there. Okay. Cool. Um, <sighs> immediately, there's no obvious sign of Aqua. Um, but from what you could gather when you approached the island it's a vast it's like there's more to it than you thought or you would expect right and the tree to, trees quite at this point close? yeah at this point you can see the tree um the i the island you're on seems to just incline in steps towards the tree and <clears throat> the tree seems to be growing <laughs> this is going to sound stupid the see, tree seems to be growing out of the out of the hill not how you would expect it just seems like the hill inclines to the top and then stops and then the tree is already growing if that makes sense um Uh, let me see if I can... It's like... If this is the hill, kind of just like... Oh, stop. Go, oh, stop. Unselect. I want to select the tree. There we go. Um, the tree is like... This. It seems to be growing... Through the... Through the hill, not from it. Okay. Right, well, we need to find Aqua first. So go in the comms and just tell him that we're on land now. Um, we can't see him. Is there anything he can do uh, to cool. let yeah. us know where we are? There are. It doesn't allow me to pick my colour still. But dancing lights. Have them kind of, each one of them circling me. Can we, um, can we estimate how long the shoreline is? Like, can we see where the island would curve? No. So it's well more than a mile, probably something. Oh like yeah, that. it's it's probably like twenty miles. <laughs> if we, if like we're talking in sort of grander terms, like sort of. But I would have gone here and then asked them if they could see my lights. Can you see me now? <laughs> <laughs> um, have we got any spells? Well, not we. I mean, not me, obviously. <laughs> to, to, like, find him? Yeah, I should be able to. Um, hold on. Hold that thought. <laughs> is, 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 is there any chance you could locate a creature or something? 
That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> I just need to see if I've actually got it um, selected. Which I do, because I think we used it before, didn't we? Mm -hmm. There we go, I can locate a creature. Describe or name the creature if that's familiar to you. Uh, as long as he's within 1,000 feet of us. That's not that much, that's like 300 meters. Maybe it's not worth using yet then. Wow. That's a surprisingly accurate... 304.8 meters. Yeah, I can do math. I'm just, like... It was just... We don't know yeah. conversions off the top of our head. Yeah. Do you have magic missile? No, well, can someone ask him if he has magic missile or something? Something he can shoot in the air? Um, Brim wants you to shoot some spells maybe into the air. Okay. I mean, I can do that. Something that goes far up so we can see. But no, oh, whoa, whoa. What if he's, what if there's like danger around him and he doesn't know it? Just... Tell him to shoot spells in the air. It doesn't matter. It's fine. He's gonna be fine. Hey, Akra. Yeah. Imagine if you could like summon a spirit. <clears throat> Maybe like a draconic spirit or something <laughs> that you could fly on. I actually use it to fly on? Yeah. It's a large dragon. <laughs> okay, let's uh, summon it then. Oh shit, I need to be ready with this. <laughs> yeah, be ready with us. Um, which, what did I say I had again? It was a... Uh, um... it was... I can't remember, it was like... Metallic one, weren't it? Yeah. I think it was a silver dragon, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, we'll give it that token. Technically, so adult silver dragons are huge, but that's fine. <laughs> I remember last time having to having trouble trying to import the thing because it was being difficult. Um, so, you can use a, a draconic spirit to fly into the air and see. <laughs> yeah, I'll get on it. Okay. <clears throat> cool. Um, the three of you are immediately aware of um, the flapping of wings from, dis from a distance, like not close up. And then breaking through the tree line, you just see this sort of large sort of semi-ethereal silver dragon flying over the, over the sky. Through the sky. Do we recognise that as the spell we did before? Or should we be worried that mm -hmm. the dragon... Um, <laughs> one or the other. You've seen me do it once. A while ago. It also didn't tell us you were doing it by the comms, so we just see a dragon coming out. <laughs> also... Uh... said any spell. <laughs> <laughs> also, um... It's flying off in the other direction. Oh, uh, come back, come back. I think we, well, but, oh, do I know it's him? I guess. Yeah, I would have said, right, I'm flying in the air now. Okay. We'll come back the other way because uh, we're, we're the other way. Oh, Down the okay. Coast. Turn the dragon around. <laughs> I haven't had to train. Don't yet. make me turn this dragon around. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, can I, like, slow how fast this dragon flies to, like, do a search? I have given you the dragon. You should be able to move it. Ooh. Like, I would follow the coast. Yeah, okay. Um, eventually, after about a minute, you do see your friends down on the ground, just kind of staring up at you, gawping. Um, it's about this time, Bryn. Mm-hmm. Is that anything to do with you? What? She's... The familiar voice yeah, is just kind of talking to you. Oh, okay. 
Oh, I found it. Hang on. You called it Beatrice. That was it, Beatrice. Wait, Beatrice, come up. <laughs> That's not large. It's drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have control of Beatrice. Oh. That's I have tight. to have the dragon back. No, you can have Beatrice. I'll just give you her. <laughs> Hang on, making some changes. Um, do you respond, Bryn? Well, say again what he said. I'm sorry, I, I wasn't realizing that you were talking to me. Is that something to do with you? I, I, I first thing I do before responding is look around, confused. What? Make a perception is check. It... Perception. Perception. Twenty. Um, you don't see um Stappen anywhere. You don't see any scrying eyes. You don't see anything unusual, except for like a giant tree, obviously. I was just Where wondering. I just saw. A dragon flying through the sky. I thought that was rather unusual. I just assumed, you know. So you are the chaos maker? No. What makes you say that? I'm just mm. adventuring, like you. Mm -hmm. Sure thing. Of course. I say all of this out loud. Um, and then I look at Vic and just point to my head, not really relaying what I'm, what's going on, <laughs> but I hope he understands. <laughs> Bryn might be cracking, Vic. <clears throat> Voice the ten had to steal again. <laughs> okay, I'd understand, I think, that something's in her head, <laughs> to her, I guess. You know what? Can I roll an intelligence shit? <laughs> you can roll. You can roll if you want. Um. Hmm. I'm getting a clue that she might be getting talked to, I think, in the head. Yeah. Okay. Well, it makes a change for um, her talking to other people in their heads. Hmm. Sass. Okay. Genuinely, I don't understand how you guys don't think that mes message and sending are the most fun spells in this game. <laughs> no. It's like ringing someone up and they can't like, not answer it, though, isn't it? It's yeah, it's like getting cold, cold into your head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, imagine the marketing strategies. Oh, yeah. So oh. Skull make local cool things and then you just tell people they have to buy them otherwise you won't stop calling them. Yes. <laughs> if you had an accident, it wasn't your fault. Yeah. You will now. <laughs> you always have to limit yourself. You always have to limit yourself to 25 words. <laughs> like, yeah, I was in this city once and the big tidal wave came through. Killed all my family. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, jeez. Um, so, Aqua, you must be pretty tired. No, I'm um, feeling pretty good, actually. Okay, we can crack on. The, the um, weird magic in these uh, surrounding area just, just... I restored myself a bit, and it they gave me quite a boost. Okay, well, we can, like... What are we even looking for? Obviously, we found the tree, but... Like looking for, for, for the I mean, lich. Yeah, so what we're looking for like an abode or the signs of maybe corruption or something. Can... It's a big island still. How, I, what um... type of time of day is it? Or morning or night or still? It's fairly early morning at this point. We'll say about okay. seven AM. Oh okay. I am. Um, is it is it light already? Is it like yeah. a, apart from the light that's coming from the world tree? Is the sun out? Yep. Okay. I am. Um, I start to look around. 
Guys, I think something's watching us. Someone, maybe. Be that guy back from the village again, with his weird spying he, ability. Yeah, he just talked to me in, in my head as well. I think he's crying on us, or he's t spying on us. He, I think he's. I think he is the chaos maker. Maybe he's the lich. Maybe the lich, the chaos maker, and Stappen are the same person. Maybe he's just an underling. I don't know. Can I can I make out if there's actually something watching me or if it's just a just a feeling? Is it do I see anything? Do I see a scribe or do I see any an actual person in the trees watching us? No, you do not. However, you can roll an investigation check for me. Investigation is so bad though. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Seventeen. <clears throat> um giving it like a proper good look over <laughs> there's lots of nooks and crannies and shadows and you know places where someone could be hiding but you can't see anybody not particularly specifically you can't see Stappen so we are on the shoreline and then we are on the beach, right? Or is are we already in the trees? Are the trees there, up there, to the shoreline? <clears throat> there is no beach. Okay, it's so... just water that beats up against land, literally, okay. and then ground. How um how packed are the trees? They're fairly. There's there's a few dense spots, but mostly there's quite a lot of sight line around you. Right. I'm going to take Beatrice up into the air above the trees and because I've only got off her about an hour so I'll fly her around see if I spot any places of interest that okay. we can head to Yeah. and fly back just before you have a 55 minutes left of her okay Um. so in that time roll me just one big perception check please Bomb. 18. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, you get a very good view of the how the world trees is um, protruding from the ground. Um, basically, as the hill sort of grows up, it's almost like the ground was pushed against it to the point where it was just pushed upwards. Um, so as if you fly closer and get quite close to the world tree the, br the branches seem to expand for miles around and the closer you get the brighter the light is um, and there's a sort of purpley pink hue that comes off it it just seems to revitalize you you see you feel very good um you just, you know, you, as in, like, you feel invigorated. Um, and looking down, there's no... Like, the, it seems like the world tree is growing from beneath the island. But you don't see in amongst the trees. Like, there's plenty of... It, again, it's fairly consistent in how the trees are growing, and you don't see any structures or buildings, um, any signs of life, even um, like animal life, wildlife. It just seems to be the four of five, well, technically six of you. And by six, I mean five. <laughs> I can count. Um, what are the other three doing while Aqua's looking? Well, I'm still being paranoid, so I, I start. I, I'm not wandering off from the group, not more than maybe 50 feet. Or... I suppose I haven't got any other spells that could alleviate your paranoia. I mean, scrying eyes. 
doesn't really tell us much. Well, if it's successful, I suppose. Can you scry? I can scry, yes. Good. I want to know where he is. <laughs> okay, we'll try that again. All right. Oh, yeah, you're right. He stayed close, so I'm going to remove. All right. Where is he? There he is. Um, did I do the right one? No, oh, I think I pressed the wrong button. Yes, I did. Fuck's sake! I think you rolled a eighteen last time, last week as well. I did, yeah. God damn it! I didn't want to hide this one. I I always feel weird when I hide rolls from you because I'm like, I'm gonna tell you. If I'll like be honest with what the roll is, but how do you know? I got none. Bryn, almost immediately, as after the ten minutes of casting is up, um, there's a. If you wanted to know where I am, you should have just asked. I asked you, and you didn't answer. Where are you? Behind you. I turn around immediately. No, no. I haven't... That wasn't the answer. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Behind you. <laughs> it sounded like... No. Like the answer. I was gonna... It sounded like a threatening behind you. No. Behind you? Yes. You hear a whisper. Here. I don't like it. I still turn around immediately. Immediately, he is just like stood there casually. Hey. This is so much easier, don't you think? You were the ones crying on us the entire last week. I just wanted to make sure you were safe. Mm -hmm. There he is. Sure. It's impressive, to say the least. It's a dangerous part of the world. I just wanted to make sure that you were getting through it okay. Why are you here? Because you wanted to know where I am. Yes, but why are you here on this island? Why did you scry on us? Why? What is? What? What do you have? What, oh yeah, haven't yeah. You noticed Why? The, haven't you noticed the things in the sky? I look in the sky. I, well, well, they're not there now, are they? They've been flashing overnight. Yeah, I have. Just interested in them. Okay, do you know what they are? No, that's why I want to find out. And you think they come from here, from the tree? It's a good bet. Oh, to be Nell and have detect thoughts. I don't, I don't trust him. I don't trust him. How was your journey? A little bit rocky, but mostly fine. Cool, 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 cool. Mine was, was easy. Yours? Mine was easy. Mine was easy. I uh, just teleported. Yeah, thought so. Don't worry, Brim. One day, you'll be a powerful spellcaster. I know, I know it must be hard to hear, but it's okay to be bad at things, okay? It doesn't reflect badly on you that you're not a very powerful mage, like me. I never aspired to be a mage. Mage, spellcaster... Is it that you do? I'm an innkeeper. Of course. Because that explains a lot. I suppose that lack of aspiration and determination in your life is what's holding you back. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Where's your blue friend? And his dragon companion friend thing. That's a neat trick. I just point up in the air. Hmm. Just just looking around. 
And you can't do that, Bryn, no? What, looking around? No, summon, summon things. I can... No, I don't want to summon things. I'm not interested in summoning things. I see. Again, that lack of aspiration. Never mind. Never mind. <clears throat> and your two companions, I see, are still here. Good, 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 good. They managed to carry you here, did they? Sure. It's good of them. Was, as she said, a quite tricky journey. I'm quite lucky that we didn't get into any more trouble, considering what we're up against. Hmm, indeed, indeed. Um, what are you up against? Well, there was this, well, as Aqua described it, a leviathan, a massive creature. Didn't really have much form, from what I can tell. It was like a giant storm. Nearly swept us all away. But uh, myself and Vic were tied to the raft. And... See, that's the kind of ingenious thinking that, you know, gets you through life. Yes, See, and... The, you're around the right people, Bryn. These kind, of, these, these kind of people will teach you how to survive. <laughs> I'm sure they will. Well, luckily, Aqua can breathe underwater, so he's covered in most circumstances in his nature. Indeed. And again, just this natural ability. Yeah, Bren, why don't you just you know learn to breathe underwater? <laughs> hmm. I, yeah, I know. But, uh, I can try. There's potions for that. I can buy some. But anyway, now that we're all here. Indeed, Goodbye. indeed, we've made it. Congratulations to us. As we should find our way to the uh, the world tree proper. And see if there's anything weird going on. Fantastic. Lead the way. I'll join you. Okay. We'll wait for Aqua to return, though. Ah, Bryn, you're already learning. Good thinking, good thinking. That's the kind of forward thinking that gets you somewhere in life. Stappen. Hello. Hello. Um, I was wondering, like, because obviously you're very good with magic and we've seen your book and how many spells you obviously know. Are you got any kind of spells in there that could, I don't know, locate any kind of place on this island that is different or that we should be heading to? You know, like... I don't know, like a, a big dwelling. I don't know. Something that shouldn't be here. Well, if you're looking for a big target to aim towards, look no further than the tree. Well, obviously, but is could there be anything else here that you could detect or? Well, inter an interesting question. Um, he pulls out his book from his bag and just starts flicking through pages. And this book is, you know, probably like hundreds of pages um, long. And um, if you're trying, if you try and look look at it, um, you can see that the script inside is so fine. Like it is writ written in as small script as possible to fit as much on a page as he can. Hmm. 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 Wow. Hmm. Hmm. Not necessarily. But. Um. Uh. Hmm. Uh. Um, uh, no. <laughs> there, there must not be a spell for that. Right. Okay. He, he Maybe takes you can out, come up with one. He takes out another book that you can see is written on the front is Stappen's spell 
ideas and just starts scribbling. Mm. <laughs> mm. What about something just to help our journey through through to the tree at least? Anything fun? Anything interesting? Hmm. Hmm. Fantastic question, Vic. That's the kind of forward really... thinking that gets you somewhere in life. Uh, mm. I say while stalling. Uh, <laughs> Um, you know, really to show Bryn what you're capable of, you know. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Um, this isn't like me trying to, like, make Bryn feel bad for not being as good, but this is me more like just trying to milk him for usefulness. Um... Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Um... Okay, okay. Um, yes, I can get you there. Quite quickly, in fact. Shall we wait for your friend to reappear, or shall we go now and just wind him up a little bit? I think we should wait for him. Uh, I was going to say, probably be quite upset if Bryn got there first. Also, he might have seen something that's worth, you know, letting us know about, so. Indeed. 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 Okay, let's wait. And he just kind of sits down and starts scrolling, like scribbling in his um, book of spell ideas again. Yeah. Um, another 20 minutes or so pass and Aqua returns. I just watch Stappen while we wait for Aqua to come back. Okay, are you wa watching for anything in particular or just watching? No, just observing his behavior and studying what he's doing and also looking out for what he is if he's observing us in any way or something, you know, if I, if I, she's still sus 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 blah, 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 suspecting that he might be the lich or, and, or the chaos maker, if, if they're the same person. Mm -hmm. And she wants to just see if he's just putting on an act and being, you know, being nice to them or being, but no, well, he's not particularly nice, but being, Interacting with them to study their behavior to get a, to get to get one up on them or something. Okay. So I'm trying to do the same in reverse. All right. Roll a perception uh, insight check for me, please. Insight. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Nice. Thirty-one. Bloody hell. Um, <laughs> not even my highest stat. Mm -mm. No. Oh. It's true. Um, he just sits. Like, he sat very casually. He sits up against a tree, pops his um, rucksack to the side of him, his backpack to the side, pulls out his books. He starts scribbling. Um, he sat, like, comfortably. doesn't seem to be particularly nervous or in any way um, bothered by the... Four, like three of you and then four of you being around just seems chilled and um it's quite calm you don't notice him paying you any attention like he's not necessarily watching you mm -hmm. um he's just you know sat there or like writing in his book he's right-handed um and he is very proficient at writing the small script that you've seen in his book before by by hand quite quickly you know he seems okay. to have been done, doing this for a long time um he, he very rarely blinks you when i don't remember what you described him as or whether you even did but if i it does he appear human it appears to be um there's no there's more there's if 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 he's anything he's more human than not 
Okay. Um, do I get a sense of his age, like from the looks? From his looks, you'd barely think more than late twenties. From his behavior. From his behavior, it's difficult to tell. He could be, um, like he's just so calm and collected that he could be anything. So, yeah, so I, he could be no confirmation either way, but he could be older than he plenty looks. Could be. Okay. okay. He just has like a calm charm to him, you know, mm -hmm. where he just holds himself so confidently that, um, you know, it's like he's seen this all before. Um, as a as the, yeah, I was going to say, as Aqua comes and lands back with you, um, you see Stappen sat n next to a tree, just kind of writing in his book. Ah, you're back at last. Good, good. Um, we were going to head off to the World Tree if you'd like to come. I ignore him. Go to bed. <laughs> uh, so. Tree's massive. Didn't see anything like a layer or a structure that we could go to. And the only thing that I could think of is, unfortunately, heading to the world tree. Uh, yeah, I think we might have a easy way of getting there. Oh, uh, really? What's happened? Wait, you, don't you have a polymorph scroll? I have two. You should know. You took them off me. Can you not polymorph yourself into something flying? But that's the same as me just using my flying potion. Where we can all ride you. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'm comfortable with that. <laughs> I don't know of anything big enough that can fly. It's not a dragon. Well, could we all fit on your dragon? Uh, my dragon has like five minutes left up before he disappears. Mm -hmm. Can you cast it again? Nope. Fuck. I can cast it. Stop and say you have something. Yeah. You can cast what? The same thing. You said you wanted a dragon, no? Just want something to fly on so we can just fly to the world tree directly and not have to navigate these jungles. You don't have to navigate these jungles, I've already told you. I can get you there almost instantaneously. How long does it take to convert sales points? Is that like an instant thing? Pretty sure. Yeah, it's a bonus section. Well then, if you give me like 10 seconds, I can actually summon Beatrice again. I am more comfortable uh, comfortable with Aqua doing something than you. I... That's a <laughs> little bit insulting, Bryn, but I guess <laughs> you want to rely on your usual high-level spellcaster than a new one, right? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough, I suppose. Is Beatrice big enough that we can all fit on her? No. Well. Technically no. How many could, how many people could fit on Beatrice? Um, <clears throat> the three of you, Aqua, Vic, A Aqua, Scold, and Bren, but Vic's too big. Sorry, <laughs> uh, Could she carry him in her in, in her claws? Mm, no, it's more of a weight thing. Does Could we? A potion of what is it? Enlarging. <laughs> could we Alan? just no? But could we just polymorph? Vic into something tiny. I mean, if Vic knows of a flying creature you can turn into, then yeah, we I'll can, give him a scroll. We can just polymorph him into a mouse and put him in our pocket. Yeah. Can we just do two dragons if Stefan can do one? I'm you sorry, feel free to be, feel free to do right with Stefan. I am not going to do that. Um. 
Um, okay. Can't we uh, just teleport? Teleporting sounds cool. Clicks his fingers and points at Scold. That's the ticket. I think that also save Akka's spell, right? Or yeah, abilities. Yeah, it would, would save my uh, spell slots. I guess, Bryn, once you get to a certain level of power, you don't really want to be wasting your spells. These are fairly highly powered, intense spells. I know, you know, I know you might not understand that and feel that just yet, but one day you might feel just how much it can take out of you, especially when such an easy option is alter, such an easy alternative is there. Sure. Yeah, let's do it solution in teleporting us there. Do it. Seem... <clears throat> Do you guys want to teleport? I... Wanting is not the question. Having to? Yeah, sure. I'll be up for it as long as I don't have to walk or travel anymore. Perfect. Here we go. He just clicks his fingers. And it happened so quickly. Everyone drowns, but me. <laughs> it happened so quickly, I don't even have a map for it. But that's okay, because we're going to end the session there. Good job, guys. You didn't die. Yay. I mean, at mm. one point, I thought we were getting close. I thought, oh <laughs> boy, I think it's the size of a continent. Yeah, mm, not a continent. But we're gonna have one two adventures inside of it. Oh, that would be cool. That would have been cool. One day. One day. Mm. However, I'm gonna come back now just for that. <laughs> <laughs> Next week we actually roll back time. <laughs> we're now gonna do four weeks of individual adventures through the Storm Leviathan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll be back next week. We'll see where um Stappen actually takes you. Who knows? Yeah. It's gonna be a dick and take us back to the starting village. <laughs> mm. Mm, maybe. Maybe, we'll see. We'll see. We've got a whole week to wait and see. <clears throat> I mean, the safe option, obviously, is just, you know, wasting Aqua's... Well, not wasting, using Aqua's spell. But I'm a spell scroll. I'm uh, tired. I, I've just finished commuting by by boat, which I hate. <laughs> Do you want to get to this goddamn tree? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. We'll find out if you make it. Like, what could possibly have I mean, gone what? wrong? Worst case scenario, he's a lich, and we find out. Best case scenario? He's not the lich, and we find the lich. <laughs> we find out. <laughs> Could be anyone. Who knows? Might not be him. Might be him. He might just be, be like a bit of a <laughs> bit of a dick, but might have good intentions. Exactly. Is that very powerful, but slightly. It's very tough, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's getting late. I mean, we're doing better than last week. Yeah. It's only 10 o'clock. And we started yeah. half an hour late, so... It's not so bad. Oh, anyway. Yeah. Anyway. We're going to end it there. We will Ooh. be back next Tuesday, unless everyone, anyone's missing. Is everyone going to be here next week? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. I'm noticing silence from Rob, but everyone else is here, so he has no choice. Hey. Nah, he spoke. I didn't hear Burius. Oh, I heard Burius, but not Rob. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Everyone's here. Hooray! Um, thank you, thank you, everyone, for being here. We appreciate you. Um, we'll see you next week for episode six. Um, at some point between now and Monday, this episode will go up on YouTube if you've missed any of it. 
Um, I'm trying to get into a routine of having it maybe up on Saturday. Because um, at the moment I'm struggling for Thursdays, but we'll maybe might be out on Thursday. I don't know. I'll work it out. Anyway, we will see you next week. Um, goodbye. We appreciate you.